Hello, I'm Jojo and I'm a freshman at UC Berkeley. Yesterday I was scrolling through Facebook when I realized people are gonna be committing to colleges soon. And I remember being in the same shoes and literally having a mental breakdown. I'm talking full-heartedly thinking I was gonna commit to a different school and then changing my mind at 3 a.m. two days before the deadline. Now there was a lot of pain, a lot of what ifs, a lot of tears. So I wanted to save you from some of that if that's you right now. Now remember, my expertise consists of me crying for two weeks um, scrolling through Google and one year at Cal. So make it that what you will. Now let's get into the real tea, the nitty gritty that you wanted to hear when you clicked on this video. Let me break it down. This video is going to be in three parts. I'm going to put timestamps in the description. The first part is going to be me talking about my experience with choosing a college. Then I'm going to talk about the realities at Cal, including the academics, social life, and overall living situation. And lastly, I'm going to talk about how to choose a college from the sole expertise of me going through it myself. I'm from the SF Bay Area and throughout high school, I didn't really want to go to Cal and I knew a lot of students that didn't either. Why, you may ask? Because we were spoiled Bay Area kids. My high school was really competitive and we sent a lot of kids to Cal. A lot of stories were like kind of passed down about how the living situation wasn't that great, it wasn't that safe, it was an extremely competitive environment. And also, I wanted to be away from home. I really wanted to go to the East Coast. It was all of those factors that really put Cal at not the top of my list. And looking back, I realized how privileged I was to be able to say that. But I know a lot of kids who do think that way, and I'm talking to you. Don't let what other people say about Berkeley, whether it be good things or bad things, deter you from really researching the school for yourself. When I researched Berkeley, I realized that for what I wanted to do, which was a combination of business, technology, and design, it was the perfect place for me. I didn't like the campus, I didn't like the location, but I realized I cared a lot more about the academics and opportunities that a school brings. Now, I think this was a terrible mindset to go into college with. I wasn't as excited as I should have to be attending Cal, which brings me to something very important. When I was picking colleges, a lot of people were telling me to pick the one that excites you, to go with my heart. And to me, the university that I fell in love with wasn't Cal. It was a different college. And everyone was telling me to pick that college. But when it came down to it, I realized that for my personality, Cal was gonna be more rewarding. And a year later, I'm sitting here the happiest I've ever been because of Cal, and I can't imagine going to a different school. Ultimately, you can't really listen to other people. Um, you know yourself the best and you have to trust yourself to make that decision. Now, moving on to debunking different aspects about Cal. Starting off with academics. Now, you've probably heard that the academics at Berkeley is cutthroat. Um, people are really competitive and people get depressed because of it. And to an extent, this is true. The academics are extremely difficult, but they're doable. You'll never feel like you're wasting your time or you're not learning anything. With that being said, it's not an environment for everyone. I come from a really rigorous high school, so it's helped me prepare for Cal. Either way, you come to Berkeley ready to work your butt off. Berkeley students are always trying to bite off more than they can chew, but at the end of the day, it's up to you if you want to take 13 units, which is the minimum um, requirement for you to remain a full-time student, or you can take 20 units, which is the maximum number of units you can take before you have to get permission from an advisor. It's really how much you choose to put on yourself and knowing exactly how much you can handle. There are a lot of resources that are really under use at Berkeley, um, including like free tutoring sessions and like discussions, review sessions, you just have to go to them. <laughs> now I think a really important thing to consider when you're deciding if you want to go to Cal or not is picking classes. Berkeley is a private no it's not. Berkeley is a public school, um, which means that it has no money. I'm not a part of any Regents, MET, or anything that would get me priority registration. Now, I am a CS major, which means that my classes are like 2,000 kids large. Um, I'm not exaggerating, which is why I don't really have an issue with enrollment, but I know that that can be a big problem for people with specific majors or if people are trying to like double or triple majors or something. Now, even if you do get the classes that you want, um, the majors are really impacted. So how Berkeley works is everyone in the College of Letters and Sciences is undeclared I and mean, you have to meet certain requirements to declare. Now this isn't true for most of the other colleges within Berkeley, but that is how it works. For example, for computer science we have to meet um, the requirement of a 3.5 GPA in the prereqs, which is like kind of high, you know? In a private school you'd be able to switch majors a lot easier 
and get the classes that you want to take. This is why I think UCs and public schools in general are more suited for kids who have a clear direction of where they want to go. You don't have to have your major and career sort of like planned out, but if you don't have like the two or three majors that you're thinking of, then it's going to be very difficult to actually fully explore everything. Committing to Cal means committing to the uncertainty of your major and of your grades. Um, a lot of people walk in here having 4.0s throughout high school and then barely getting B's and C's here. That's perfectly normal. Normal. But the thing is, it's going to be so fulfilling and you're going to be learning so much here. I literally walked in here a couple months ago with no coding experience. And one of our projects is coding the Enigma, which is this like encryption machine the Germans used in World War II. Like you're going to be able to accomplish a lot of things you never thought was possible. Now, moving on to... A better topic, social life. The best way I can describe social life at Cal is that everyone works hard and plays hard. Berkeley is of course not a party school, but it has a very lively social scene. I think people mainly build their communities in three different ways. This is two. The first is dorm life. I got really lucky because my floor was really chill with each other. I got random roommates and I vibed really well with them. And I've met some of my closest friends through just living in the same building as them. Another way people build their community is through Greek life. I think Greek life is a bigger thing at Berkeley than people really think it is. Even our clubs and stuff have really fratty cultures and that's something I definitely didn't expect from Berkeley. I know a lot of people in Greek life and there's frat parties all the time and if that's your scene, go for it. I was told by my roommate that uh, people don't throw it back as much as the other schools. That might be something you want to consider. <laughs> now, another way, and I think the main way a lot of people find their communities is through clubs. There's a lot of mixed reviews of clubs. Basically, some of them are really competitive and really hard to get into. And I think those select few clubs um, kind of define the culture for a lot of people. And if you're going for some of those clubs, you are going to be looking at like five rounds of interviews being rejected for most of the ones that you apply to. But what a lot of people don't realize is that most of the clubs at Berkeley aren't competitive. They're not selective. You just apply and everyone gets in. The ones that are more selective just market themselves better so it seems like they have a bigger presence than they do. If all you care about is creating that community, there's so many clubs that you can join with no issues and meet some of the coolest people. There's 30,000 kids at Berkeley and the moral of the story is your group is here you just have to go out and find them because that's a common theme at Berkeley like you got to be proactive about your life. Something I will mention though is that if you didn't know Berkeley is very very liberal. For some people that might be a pro for others it might be a con so just watch out for that. Research into all the protests that are happening here uh, and see if you want to deal with that. I grew up in the Bay Area so Berkeley's not really a culture shock for me but I know for some people that it was. I'm personally a part of a professional frat which is kind of a weird concept but it's basically a professional club that does nothing but build like a community. I've met so many people that never cease to amaze me in every aspect and they're some of my closest friends. I will say that this group helped me find that balance between academics and having a normal social life which really defined my first year at Cal and really made it like the best year of my academic career. Now moving on to the overall living situation. Let me tell you, we're going to get into it. I believe that this is the worst aspect of Cal for a lot of people. Housing is going to be old and expensive. Don't expect otherwise. And even if you're content living in an old and expensive place, you might not be able to find one. Cal housing is underfunded, so they suck, but it's not their fault. Please give me housing. <laughs> so in a lot of colleges, you get housing all four years. You're guaranteed four years of on-campus housing. And for Cal and for a lot of UCs, you get one year. But Recently, Cal has been enrolling a lot of students. Some of the freshmen this year didn't get housing. I was in a temporary housing situation, which meant that they converted a uh, like study living area, study lounge, if you will, um, into a room for four people, which is like... But I can't really complain because I don't like personally, I don't really care about a lot of like where I'm living as long as there's a bed. But I had so many amazing people around me and it really felt like family. So I didn't care too much. For context, I was living in unit three, which a lot of people consider to be like the worst one out of all of the housing uh, units. Cal is also not the safest. The homelessness issue is honestly just shocking, but I feel like at least these students aren't sheltered from that. And yeah, it's just one of those realities of living in the city. There's gonna be fights and like, 
<laughs> drive-by shootings. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of robberies and crime in general in the area. Um, I'm talking like literally like a street down from where I was living. But yeah, there's basically things happening on a daily basis. There are ways to stay safe and don't be dumb basically. Um, don't go outside at night without a buddy. Other than that, the campus is actually really beautiful and you get a really nice view of the bay. The sunsets and sunrises here are amazing. Like, I don't know why, it just like hits different, you know, than at home. Oh, food. Um, Like, the food's honestly not that bad. The restaurants and stuff around Berkeley are amazing. There's a lot of different variety. You can pretty much get whatever you want. In my opinion, then again, I did grow up in the Bay Area, so it's a lot of the same things, you feel? But dining hall food wasn't that bad. It's not UCLA. But it's edible. I still lost 15 pounds though. Now, lastly, I'm gonna give you JoJo's guide to choosing a college. First, you're gonna write down all of your possibilities. So all the schools that you got into, don't worry about the wait lists for now. Write down all the schools that you got into and then cross out the ones that you can't attend because of financial aid. Then make a different list and write down all of your priorities, whether that be the location, the social aspect, uh, the opportunities, the housing. Write down all of your priorities. Then visit or research all of the schools that were on your first list. And the reason why you had to make that second list of all of your priorities before visiting the colleges is that you'll have all of these things in your mind like laid out of what's important to you. Then you're gonna make a list of all the reasons why you want to go to each of the colleges on your list. You're also gonna make a list of reasons why you might not want to go to that college. Then at the end of this process, I really believe that you'll have a clear idea of where you should go. If not explicitly, you're gonna know deep down where you belong. The reality is the pressure you put on yourself is gonna be pretty much the same no, like no matter where you go. If you go into a college with the right mindset, whether it be Cal or somewhere else, you're gonna do great. And I'm so excited for you because college is so much better than high school, like real talk. But yes, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. If you wanna talk to anyone about your process, if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I will answer all of them and help you with your research because yeah, I just want you guys to be happy wherever you will go. And yes, I will see you guys later, perhaps in another video. Bye.